corrupted. Burn the box. So, uh, the reason why I'm here is, as you heard from Walter, because I work on stem cells, I didn't quite know how this had anything to do with thinking outside of the box. But let me tell you a little bit about the story of stem cells. If I would have sat here about 10, 15 years ago, you would have not known about stem cells because they really only came into the news at the end of the 90s when a group in the United States isolated human embryonic stem cells. Before that, stem cell researchers were really strange people in the labs who looked at little round things through microscopes, and that's what most of the population knew about it. Now, after Jamie Thompson uh, identified and isolated for the first time human embryonic stem cells, immediately there were whole books written about eternal life and regenerating ourselves, and so forth and so on. Stem cells can indeed regenerate because stem cells come actually from the concept of a tree, where you start with a seed that becomes a whole tree, gives rise to new seeds, and gives rise to all new trees again. And stem cells are the same thing. So they're cells that can learn a lot of things. It's like you send the cells to school. They learn to become a heart, learn to become the stomach or the bowels. But at the same time, the stem cell can generate a daughter cell that is again a stem cell. And so that's the reason why we can keep regenerating many of our tissues. Embryonic stem cells, which are maligned in uh, some countries, uh, also the country that I worked for 20 years by the president of that country, uh, are derived from fertilized eggs, are actually you know, a couple stages further on. They have two properties that make them extremely interesting for regenerative medicine which is that they can grow without aging, which is something that we can't do. And they can do this because in most of our cells, there's a little clock that ticks, and each time the cell divides, the clock ticks, and so if it has ticked 60 times, that's it. Now, these embryonic stem cells can keep growing without the little clock ticking, and so you can put them in a dish, and you can grow them and grow them, freeze them down, send them to the United States or to Japan, and grow them again. At the same time, they can make all the cells from a mouse, and we think also for humans, all the cells of a human. And so that's why people have said that stem cells can cure all ill, which is obviously a little bit of the good thing too much. Now, the bad part about embryonic stem cells is that we don't have our own embryonic stem cells frozen. You know, obviously, we came from the embryo, so we were the embryo, and so if you were to ever need to be treated with embryonic stem cells, it would have to be from another, quote, person, and so there would be problems with immune rejection. There is a second sort of stem cells, and our body is full of it, which we call adult stem cells. And so, for instance, the blood stem cells we use for bone marrow transplantation. These cells have reasonable ability to divide and make themselves over, but much less than embryonic stem cells, and they can't make everything. Blood stem cells make blood, brain stem cells make brain. Now, the strange thing that happened in my lab, and that's probably why Walter invited me to come and speak to you, is the fact that on, now about 10 years ago, we had cultured stem cells and by accident left them in the incubator, which is the place where you grow them, where it's warm and there's enough oxygen and so forth. And we had forgotten about this little dish, and after a month or three later, we found the dish in the corner of the incubator, and strangely enough, these cells had been, were still alive and had continued to grow, which was actually against all dogma, except that maybe it wasn't, um, because some strange things had happened just a few years before that. And actually already, many, many years ago, in 1958, an investigator at, in uh, Great Britain, uh, Gurdon is his name, cloned frogs. And so all of you know of Dolly the sheep that was cloned in the late 90s, but already at the end of the 50s, uh, John Gurdon cloned frogs. And cloning means that you take a cell from you and you do something to it and you make a whole new frog out of a skin cell from yourself or a skin cell from a sheep. It's not been possible yet in humans. But so this suggested that maybe this going to school, that you can actually reverse the process and that you can go backwards and actually go be, uh, forget all the things that you learned in school. <coughs> so we found that these cells could keep growing and actually had much broader abilities to differentiate than, that there were than they were supposed to be having. 
this really hasn't uh, been accepted until very recently when a Japanese team actually found that you could take a cell from a mouse first or a cell from a human afterwards and put four little pieces of genetic material in them, wait two to three weeks, and magic happens. From the skin cell, you actually make the equivalent of an embryonic stem cell. And this embryonic stem cell, you can send back to school, and you can learn it to become a heart, become a, the stomach, become liver, and so forth. And so you start actually from something that was skin that went to school already. You unlearn everything. You go back to the most primitive uh, cell type that you can create, and then you can send it back to school. So this means then that for all of you here in the room, if all of you gave me a skin biopsy, you know, within a month or two, I would have your own equivalent of embryonic stem cells in the incubator. And so then we can actually treat you with your own cells and not with cells from somebody else. Now, where do we stand with treating people with these types of stem cells? Uh, just in the really the early, early stages. Right now, what we're using these cells for is to find the new EPOs. And all of you know that the bikers and the runners and so forth, that they take a drug that's called erythropoietin or EPO to uh, bike faster. EPO was found because people could study stem cells. So EPO was found because we could study blood stem cells, but now we have stem cells that can make everything. So we can find the EPOs for your heart, the EPOs for your brain, and so forth and so on. The second thing we can do with these cells is if you have a disease, we could make stem cells make the disease trait in them and actually study the disease in a dish. And it can not study it in mice, not study it in fly or, or in a fish, but actually study a human disease model in the laboratory. And then all the laboratories worldwide are trying to figure out how you send stem cells to school, because that's the hard part. You know, these stem cells can do everything, and if we were to transplant them, for instance, you have Parkinson, and we want to treat you, we put these stem cells in the middle of your brain, and they haven't gone to, to school totally correctly yet, and they still haven't been taught that they can't make hair and teeth, you would actually have hair and teeth in the middle of your brain, and that would not be the right solution. <laughs> So what we need to do is understand exactly how you send these cells to school and tell them you make neurons, no hair, no teeth, no nothing else, just neurons and then the right types of neurons. Once we can do that, then there's probably lots of people here who are very good with computers. We will have to have very good computers as a scientist who figure out how we fit the neurons back into the brain. Because you all know that if you connect two electrical wires incorrectly, you get a, you know, you get a little shock, but you actually don't get the same, the correct result. And so even though in newspapers it says that by tomorrow we'll regenerate everything, I wished it was true, but it will take probably quite a bit more time yet before we get there. Now, which diseases will we be able to treat with stem cells or regenerate? Diseases where you have lost something, so I told you uh, Parkinson's, for instance, diabetes, where the insulin-producing cells have disappeared. Something that's gone away, if you can create it in the laboratory and give it back to a person, you can treat a person like that. Cancer, for instance, is not something that goes away. It's something that comes on top of it. So to say that stem cells will treat all cancers, that's not quite true, because it's you know, not the right thing. The bad part is, with the stem cells, we might create cancer, and so therefore we have to be extremely careful, not just being afraid of teeth and hair in the middle of your brain, but you know, if you make cells divide many times in the laboratory, it's like a typist who has to copy the DNA, and each time the DNA is copied, you know, there's many, many bases that need to be uh, re retyped each time. Each time this happens, mistakes can happen. And it's very obvious that if you copy it enough times, that actually the mistakes are such that they could actually be the basis for cancer development rather than a therapy and a cure. So I think stem cells will probably help regenerate. Maybe not because we have a bag of cells, we send a bag of cells to school, make a specific cell type and put it in, but because we will find these EPOs for the brain and EPOs for the liver. Because we have, besides embryonic stem cells, in our liver, in our brain, in our heart, there are stem cells. If we can figure out exactly what the proteins or the molecules are that we have to give to these cells to do a much better job, we'll actually be able to regenerate from inside and not the notion that people have that somehow magically doctors will make the cells and put them back into a person. And so I think that in the next 
one or two decennia, we will be able to regenerate some tissues. How good that's going to be, uh, time will need to tell. Um, you know, um, things happen often by accident. Maybe we'll find by accident again how to study, to send these um, cells to school better, such that they actually learn more specifically what they're supposed to do and also know very well what they're not supposed to do. But that will take still quite a bit of time and actually quite a bit of uh, 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 scientists who spend a lot of time to look at these little round things in culture dishes, just like, we, like where we started. So I think there is hope to regenerate, but the regeneration will still have to uh, wait for a few days. And so hopefully um, you know, that will be the future for probably not the baby boomers, but the generation after the baby boomers. Thank you.